Uh, this talk will be about our fast neutron multiplicity counter uh, and uh, we'll briefly report some first results of the measurement campaign we carried out at Idaho National Laboratory the past August, uh, where we investigated the uh, and characterized the system uh, using plutonium samples. So first of all, I want to thank Professor Zonghi for uh, just, uh, his uh, discussion about the challenge of identifying the challenges. Uh, but what I want really to uh, just, uh, just as a reminder, uh, even looking at the first version of the MPT, uh, we see that there is a focus since then uh, on uh, the uh, uh, instruments and techniques uh, to, uh, to follow the uh, flow of uh, fissionable materials. So since then there was this need and there was an effort uh, to support the research uh, to address this need. And uh, in these years, since 1970, it seems that the need is still, uh, it's still on because uh, uh, at the last uh, um, review conference uh, last May, in the US reports, we can still read that uh, the United States has an ongoing effort in developing instrumentation and systems uh, to um, improve effective effectiveness of safe <coughs> implementation. So going a little bit more in detail in what we're developing, uh, so multiplicity counting, uh, we are um, looking at the state of the art. It is uh, mostly based on uh, helium-3 detectors. Uh, so we uh, want to exploit uh, uh, different kind of detectors, organic scintillators, and uh, exploit their uh, features uh, which are uh, suitable for these applications. Uh, as a matter of fact, organic scintillators uh, feature a nanosecond time scale detection, uh, which in turn gives higher accuracy uh, at uh, comparable irrigation times, uh, mostly because of a low sensitivity to accident counts, uh, and the capability uh, for the same reason basically to measure higher order multiplicity events uh, without the need of uh, moderating the uh, sample to inspect. So on the right side you can see uh, one of the commercial systems is a passive Newton coincidence well counter. Just to mention, IAEA still uh, expresses its need to have a faster counting systems uh, and more accurate. Uh, so um, what we have in the bottom picture is a, a really nice result from a, a, um, a parametric study carried out by David Chacheson and uh, other uh, colleagues. Uh, and they ident uh, and they compared the AFAS, um, organic AFAS, uh, um, uh, detection system to uh, which uh, is showed in uh, solid line to um, a helium free based one in terms of uh, detection uh, variance of the um, of measurement variance and as we uh, we can see as a function of the SA time um, for uh, at, uh, at the same SA time uh, the um, uh, fast, uh, uh, the fast uh, Newton, uh, the fast multiplicity counting has a lower variance, so better uh, accuracy, of course. Uh, and if we want, if we have a target accuracy, then we would get it in, uh, uh, we would get it faster, so with a lower uh, say time. Uh, so with this in mind, uh, uh, we developed a system which is uh, um, uh, which consists of 16 organic singulators in a checkerboard assembly in a well, in a well shape uh, and these singulators uh, are um, uh, eight of them are liquid so EJ309 and eight are still beans solid plastic um, also um, we use the um, digitizer a can uh, analog to digital converter it's a 14 bit resolution in amplitude and 500 megahertz in frequency, and it also allows uh, the capability of rejection of single counts, which we exploited actually during our management campaign. Uh, so this is the new prototype, but the group has already experienced this kind of measurement. So as a matter of fact, a few years back, a different kind of, um, a similar um, counter, but based only on the EJ309s, was tested with a number of different plutonium samples. Uh, but as you can see in the results, although uh, the number of uh, double counted per second uh, uh, is linear with the plus 140 effective mass, there is a gap uh, in the range between 5 and 50 uh, grams of plus 140 effective mass. So we have the double fold aim of filling this gap and uh, using stud beans. 
So why still beans? Bean has been known for a long time uh, to have a great capability of discriminating between neutrons and uh, gammas, uh, but only recently uh, a technique was developed to grow it in a reasonable size for this kind of application. So the first fact we're using a two by two, um, uh, two by two, two, two uh, cylindrics uh, detector, two, uh, two inches diameter, uh, two inches length, uh, and uh, three by three uh, EJ309. On a separate note, um, uh, this still being also performs better in terms of this, uh, this kind of specifically this attack, but, um, in terms of energy resolution, although we don't, it's not really relevant for, for this application. But what is relevant is that we can go, uh, we can operate a lower threshold. Lower threshold means a higher intrinsic efficiency. Uh, so we did some testing, preliminary testing in the laboratory with the sources that we had available, which were top volume, spontaneous fission, and plutonium very the distribution of the correlated counts as a function of time is clearly uh, different for the two sources. Uh, and, uh, but what, uh, and we also see, uh, so we see the dots and we also see a simulated model using the MCMP X Polymi uh, Monte Carlo code uh, and they came very well uh, in the case of uh, the California. Um, and um, the reason why uh, it's not showed for uh, it's shown only for uh, the, the neutrons uh, in the plutonium beryllium case is that the source is not very well known, so uh, we're uh, we're not uh, we're not fully uh, aware of their composition. Um, uh, if we then integrate uh, the number of uh, counts within a time window, which in this case was about 200 nanoseconds. Uh, we can uh, also look at uh, not only singles and double counts in uh, the bottom right picture, but also uh, to triples uh, and even quadruples. Uh, and in this case, again, uh, uh, the spontaneous fission uh, is um, clearly discriminated by the alpha and the uh, source that we had the chance to measure. Um, once we tested uh, and we validated the viability of the system, um, we start planning. We started planning our measurements at uh, IMO, uh, and um, we uh, uh, were continuously um, communicating with the Chichester, uh, and uh, we knew the composition of the materials that we were going to measure during the summer. And specifically, we had access uh, to two sets of uh, fuel plates of the zero power research reactor, PAHN and PANN. Uh, PANN is um, uh, each plate is about 100 grams in mass, uh, in um, yeah, 100 grams, uh, and uh, the size you can see there in the, the picture is about uh, 0.8 inch thickness and uh, 2 by 3 in size. Um, PANN so is mostly 239, and PAHN is uh, about 80 grams uh, of uh, 239, and the rest is mostly 240. Uh, we of course uh, we double check that uh, by assembling this plate we would we'll not get a critical assembly, and uh, this is a picture of uh, you know, one of the considerations <laughs> of the plates. Uh, in still in the design stage, uh, we tested. We, we wanted of course to maximize uh, the sensitivity of the system to neutron doubles, so while shielding the decay component, which is uh, unavoidable, uh, gamma. Uh, so we tested several uh, configurations in terms of um, uh, orientation of the plates uh, and also shielding material to be used. Uh, so we see we ended up using configuration A, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's shown in the picture on the on left side, uh, and um, uh, half an inch of lead uh, for shielding. Um, and here you can see the simulated uh, model on the left uh, and on the right hand side um, the uh, final assembly, uh, which also includes a aluminum holder, uh, which also of adjustable height. As a matter of fact, we also vary the height of the fuel plate. Uh, we'll be able also to study the uh, position sensitivity of the response of the so these are first results, some uh, correlated counts, correlated neutron counts. Uh, on the left side, you can see the doubled correlations uh, for uh, two detectors, uh, displays of 180 degrees, one from each other. Again, uh, the dots are measured and the uh, solid line is uh, simulated. Uh, and on the right side, uh, the uh, 90 degree ones. 
uh, to two pairs, uh, two pairs of the, um, two detectors uh, at uh, this place at 90 degrees angle, and you can uh, see a slight uh, broader distribution of for the 180 degree one, mostly due to crosstalk. Um, going forward, uh, if we look at the doubles per second as a function of the number of plates. Uh, on the right side, we see uh, the uh, trend for uh, um, the PAHN, so the one with a uh, lower plutonium uh, 240 content. Uh, and we see this nice um, uh, increasing, uh, monotonic increasing trend, which we would expect. Uh, and on the right side, uh, the same uh, results for, uh, for PAHN. Uh, I agree with Professor He, we don't need just to show good results. Here we have a nonlinearity and we are working on understanding if something happened during the measurement or uh, there is another reason why uh, we have it. So with the uh, aid of simulations, uh, we will match the, uh, we, we, will, uh, we will address uh, this nonlinearity. Uh, once again, uh, here uh, the range is uh, from 3 uh, to 19 plates which means in terms of uh, plutonium-239, a mass uh, uh, ranging from uh, about uh, 80 grams to 1.5 kilograms for one set of plates, and uh, about um, 100 grams to 2 kilograms for uh, the PA and N. And uh, on the, ta the table you can see the whole composition of the plates, so it's not only, of course, uh, uh, 239 and 240. Um, and with these, uh, uh, I'm already... Uh, I'm going to conclude. Uh, again, uh, the main goals of uh, this project were uh, uh, to develop a system uh, towards um, uh, we should uh, um, <coughs> better determine the mass of these same materials uh, within the framework of the, our trust area in the CVT and also address uh, the helium-3 shortage. Uh, what we did was to successfully measure neutron doubles from plutonium metal, metal plates uh, at uh, Idaho National Laboratory after testing the system uh, at the University of Michigan. And we had the chance to work with a wide range of masses from about 100 grams to 2 kilograms. We uh, reported a monotonic increasing trend in neutron doubles and we also studied the uncertainty of uh, the measurements uh, is a function of time, so to find the minimum time necessary to get the 5% uncertainty in the measurement, uh, and also uh, analyze uh, higher multiplicity trends. And we're planning on testing the system in an active interrogation setup, which is also very interesting, very interesting for a essay of the uranium. I want to thank you for your attention and also to thank uh, our uh, CVT for making this uh, experimental campaign possible and the Richard Chester and uh, Scott Thompson who are here and all the INL personnel for their help and assistance during the measurement. Um, in order to verify uh, non proliferation treaties, diesel material cutoff treaties, um, we identified a gap.